Okay, everyone. So in this video, we're going to look at how to send emails from an Access database. And that database is going to store both the email recipient's addresses, as well as the criteria that's going to be used to determine if they should be receiving an email. For example, some organizations send emails out on the birth date. So what happens is a query runs that looks to see what the uh, birth date is versus today's date is. And if they match, then an email gets sent out saying happy birthday. So let's take a look to see how we would do that. Now, the actual email will be sent via Outlook. So you would need to have Outlook configured on your computer. More than likely, if you're using Access, you've probably gone all in for Microsoft Office. And what will happen is whatever address is the default like because sometimes you might have multiple inboxes whichever address you're signed into the computer as that is the one that the email will be sent from like at work i have access to multiple inboxes for the different groups that i support but the if i was to do this process at work it would send out of my um, the email address associated with my login to the computer Okay, so let's see how we can do that here. So now I'm going to proceed slightly differently than what I normally do. Normally I make a table, populate a bunch of values, and then proceed, but I don't want to take up a lot of your time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right into how to use the command, and then if you determine that you have enough information, you can then go do whatever it is that you need to do, or you can stick around and look at the additional iterations of the command. So let's click on create in the upper left corner. I'll go over to blank form and click on that. I'm going to do the normal kind of cleanup that I do. I think it's a good practice because with the record selector, people might be able to navigate in a way that you don't want them to and that you know, don't necessarily have the ability to control. So I'm going to click on view. I'm going to click on design view, and we're just going to clean that up and then proceed. Again, it's really not necessary for the purposes of this tutorial, but I think it's a good practice to make sure you've got your database locked down. So we're going to click on design. We're going to click on property sheet, and right now the form is selected. See that little dot? That's telling you the form is selected. So this is the property of the form as a whole. So we're going to click on format, and where it reads border style, we're going to make that thin rather than sizable. That way, in case the layout is very important, they can't break the layout. Record selector, no. And navigation buttons, no. And then we'll just come back up here to view in the upper left corner. You can see that's cleaned up. Again, really not necessary for the purposes of this, but it's a good habit to get into, in my opinion. Helps you lock down the form, and that way people aren't navigating in a way that you don't intend them to. And all I did there is I just went back to view, and then went back to design view. Okay, so we're just going to create a button. So this is button right here, so you're on design tab still. Controls. I'm going to click on button. I don't care about size or placement. I just need something to attach the code to. The button wizard comes up. We can just cancel out of that. Now, with the button selected, this is now the properties of the button. So as I would mentioned, when the dot was here, this is the properties of the form. This is the properties of the button. Always, always know what you're looking at the properties of because you could make a real mess if you are changing attributes that you don't want to change because you think you're changing it for one item or one object, but you're really changing for another. So just keep in mind, make sure you know what's selected. These are the corresponding properties for that object. So we want event. We want on click. We're going to click on the ellipsis and we choose code builder and OK. Let's add a few spaces. Okay, so D-O-C-M-D. So you're going to run a command. You're going to do a command dot send object. So this is the crux of this lesson. You're learning how to use the send object command. Now, 
There's two versions of this. One, what we're going to look at right now, where you do not send an object. Well, you do not send an attachment. Okay. So you're still sending an email. You're just not sending an attachment. You're not sending a database object attached to that email. And the second version, therefore, is when you do send an attachment. Right now, we have nothing to send because I said I was going to jump ahead, show you the basics of the command, and if you had everything you needed at that point, then you could just uh, move on to whatever project you're working on. But if you needed more, we can look at later iterations. So for this version, we're going to do no object. So the second, third choice down, sorry. So why would you want to send an email from a database but not send an object? Well, maybe it's a birthday email. So a query runs, says, okay, today is the birth date of these 20 people. So these 20 emails will go out saying happy birthday. You really wouldn't send them an attachment. Even if there was something... Um, Within the body of the email, you could give them whatever you want right there. You wouldn't have to have an attachment with like a coupon or whatever. You could just have it be right in the body of the email. So, AC send no object, comma. Now, you still have to put placeholders here for these fields, even though you said there's no object. So, just do a comma. So, object name is blank. In the case I'm just reading right across what it's showing here, output format is now bold. We're skipping that, so you can't just not put in those fields. You have to add the commas. Okay. Now two, who's this going to? Test person at live.com. So the entire email address is within quotes, and then the email address, including the at symbol, the domain .com .net, wherever. Now, for the most part, you're probably not going to hard code an email address. This is just for demonstrative purposes. More than likely, what you do, and we'll again look at this at a later iteration, you'll replace this string with a field from your table. We don't have a table, so we don't have a field put here. But again, you would have a field that has um, address, uh, email addresses, and uh, this would run through all those emails rather than just doing a single email. Okay. So no CC, so again, you need to do the comma so it knows where you are. No BCC, subject. Again, this would be in quotes, test, subject. And again, this could come from a field from your table. So there could be a topic field. You would put that here. And again, we will look at that in a few minutes. Comma, message, text. So test, message. Again, in this comment, current format, it is uh, in quotes, edit message. This is your fail safe. Until you've tested and tested and tested and know for a fact beyond a shadow of a doubt that this works, you're always going to want to do true here. Why? Because it's not that you necessarily want to edit the message. So even though the prompt is saying edit message, what are you really doing? You're reviewing the message. You're going to make sure that this is the person you want it to go to, that this is the subject that you want them to to receive that this is the message you want them to receive. Now, in this case, since it's all hard-coded, you could say, well, that's silly. It's still a good practice. So uh, when you replace these with fields, you really want this to already be in place. OK. So let's save that. Close that. Save the form. And as I said, that is attached to this button. So we'll go to Home, click on View. And now that should execute when we click on this button. And there you go. As you can see, it says to test person at live.com. That's who we put into the to field. Subject, test subject, test message. So this is what I'm talking about. It's not so much that you necessarily want to edit this you could maybe you need to do some kind of manual uh, modification but this is really the fact that you want to review this not that you really want to send this and we're going to get an error message when we close this because the command is not complete so we close that we get an error message just say end and before we wrap this up let's show you how to add in at least some variable information so we're going to look at the subject line. Right now, it just has a constant. It has a string. What we're going to do 
is we're going to append to that the date function. And so, as we mentioned, maybe you're sending out a daily report. Well, you'd want them to know what day that report is for. So, click on View, click on Design, select the button if it's not already selected. Should have the Property button up here clicked. Property Sheet, Event tab, click on the ellipsis, should bring up that event procedure. And we're going to look at Test Subject here. What we're going to do is we're going to add a space because you want a space between the word and the actual date. Understand? In the function date. And it's actually just that easy. The, again, I said I added the space or else the date would be right up against the word test subject. So let's actually, let's replace that with daily report. Makes a little more sense. We save this, we close this, make sure the form is saved, click on view, click on command. And there you go. So now you didn't have to put in today's date. You don't want to go in there and hard code a date every single day. You want it to automatically adjust. So just like that, it took us all of 10 seconds and we've already added dynamic information to this. We've already added information that changes. So it's already grabbing system information and putting it into the email. So just a little bit of a preview. And we'll pick this up in the next video. We're going to create a table and start pulling the actual uh, recipients into the to field as well as the test message and probably uh, the subject as well. So like I said, it could be a birthday email, could be uh, some other kind of notification. So let's close this. We get our error message again because we didn't send the email. And that should do it for this video. And I hope you found it um I hope you found it useful.